Brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Hey, over here! Um, what? Right here, on the side of the house. Who said that? Look down. I'm right at your feet. Wait, the basketball? Yes, the basketball. Right down here, where the kids left me a long time ago. Man, you know how lonely it is being a ball and not being able to bounce or roll? Excuse me? Remember what you got me for the kids? You said, now kids, you have no excuse not to go outside and play. Uh-huh. Wow. I'll miss flying through the air and hearing the shouts of joy when I swish through the basket. What do you say? Could you give me a little air and remind the kids of how fun I still am? Okay. Oh, wow. You are flat. <laughs> Easy. I'm ticklish. Let's get bouncing. As Native American parents and caregivers, our encouragement to healthy lifestyles for our kids is helping them get outside and play. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov slash Indian Country. Brought to you by USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. And now, 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 now back to the sports job, Wayne Gant. And we hold the world ransom for... Excuse me while I whip this out. Broadcasting live from the Armada FM studios in Atlanta, Georgia. This, this is the Sports Chuck Show with Wayne Gandy. My chain. Go all over my rank. Go all over my watch. Don't, don't believe, believe it, just watch. watch. <laughs> look at, look at, look at, don't believe it. Welcome back watch. to the Sports Talk <laughs> Show. I'm the Sports Talk Wayne Gandy. Last week, Valentine Day. For most of you idiots out there uh, celebrating a capitalistic holiday, they sold you that it was a saint who was in love and died in the jungle <laughs> back in 900 B.C. Um, and they made Valentine's Day. Hallmark gets his money up. Flowers go up triple the rate. That dozen now is $45. Uh, the candy companies get to sell candy. The hotel rooms get to charge you double the rate. And I guess all those prices made Oscar Pistorius mad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Blade Runner. <laughs> do, do you know what uh, wax for these blades cost? The Blade Runner and a sad story of last week, but a story that we continue to see in the world of sports and around the world, um, allegedly has murdered his beautiful girlfriend. I think they should give him at least 25 years for taking such a beautiful woman off the planet. Uh, Reva Steenkamp, uh, the 30-year-old model. Sports chat. Don't murder the hot. <laughs> Don't murder the hot women. <laughs> Um, mm. shot her four times, allegedly, um, in surprising news, his agent has canceled all his future races. <laughs> uh, some things just don't have to be reported. I mean, and the agent is stupid for even letting people know that. I mean, really? Mm. So he can concentrate on defending himself. <laughs> I really, what, I wonder what he was going to do. Um, he, I think he's, he's saying it was self-defense. Um, I read different reports, and just like um, any shooting, and I think this, uh, we had a big argument on the show a couple of months ago, uh, in any shooting, more details come are going to continue to come out. So right. you say something today, it changes tomorrow. So you right. can't just be locked into one mindset. It, it is being reported that he shot her in the bedroom, some kind of way she made it in the bathroom. She was shot three more times. Uh, this happened about 9 a.m. Um, details are coming out, coming out, coming out. Uh, another <laughs> sad story uh, <laughs> Gosh. in the world of sports. This happened over in South Africa. Most of you know, might know Oscar from the 2012 Olympics. Uh, he's the double amputee 
<laughs> Did somebody stop him? Ah, Get him. <laughs> he ran the 400. That was what he was famous for. They let. Um, Will you ask him what's uh, so darn funny? <laughs> Please. I'm sorry, man. I'm just. And this is a tragic story, but uh, you know, at first they said that she thought they thought she was an intruder, right? And but finding out that she was like shot in the bedroom and then later shot in the bathroom. I, I can imagine this poor woman crouched in the bathroom and she hears the, those blades clicking down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming. See, he just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> those running. blades are clicking along the marble floors. Click, 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 click. And she's like, oh, no. And then he's got to do that little blade shuffle down the steps. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> We're going and hell. she's crouched uh, down on the floor. No, no, and he's no, no, using those he's blades to, to bounce up on and look own. over. He's looking over the door like bouncing he up on the floor. He's making a movie. Boing, er, he's making boing, a movie. Er, boing, er, boing. I'm going to get you, boing. I can see you. You bring. <laughs> Don't think this is over, bring. So she just hit his legs. <laughs> oh man. Had she had she hit his legs, he would have had to slide behind oh, her. Oh gosh. Uh, but Lord. this in way. A, in a tragic story. Uh -huh, yeah. A tragic way to die. <laughs> a tragic, a tragic way, way. Even more tragic way. Uh, they to said die. that he he's claiming self-defense because he did <laughs> think she was an intruder. He did carry her downstairs. Uh, so that does make you sound like he had the blaze on. Yeah, he carried uh, it downstairs because they also know. come with a crane. <laughs> 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 They're multi-purpose blades. And he tried to resuscitate her. Um, mm. He said it by giving her mouth to mouth. Uh, just a sad story. I'm quite Jeez. sure we're going to have to report on it more and more. <laughs> um, she was 30 years old. Uh, in the family. Will you stop? <laughs> the ambulance is driving around the neighborhood looking for him, and he, they can see him bouncing over the garage. Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> Boing. Hey, look over here. Boing. Hey, guys, right this way. Boing. Oh, I'm glad man. he didn't try to run. Uh, huh? It's just a, it's, it's funny. It's how far you can fall for grace so <laughs> fast. The yeah, Olympics man. was just six months ago. He was the, the, uh, he was the bell of the ball, as they say. The bell of the ball. Man. Inspirational guy. Inspirational. And 20 his idol was guy. OJ. I think his idol was OJ Simpson. I don't know. You know OJ probably like I'm the real Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> he had a gun. Uh, you he, he shot you. He, you ain't right. I don't think Oscar. I'm mm. just gonna give you my opinion. I don't know all the evidence. I don't know if self defense is gonna. I don't think that's not gonna fly. Good. That's not gonna really fly. But we'll see mm. how this case goes. Sad news once again. In the world of sports, we'll be right back with more of the Sports Jock Show. 888-926-7562. He bounced out on bail. <laughs> <laughs> The Sports Jock Show is giving you a chance to win and win big. We're giving away an Apple iPad. Plus an invite for you and three of your friends to come down to the studio and enjoy a live show. And all you've got to do is wake up with a Sports Jock. Good morning. It's Monday. We have a great show for you today. Visit thesportsjock.com and click on the Remind Me app. Each Monday, the Sports Jock will call you to remind you to listen to the show. Every time you pick up the phone, your number is entered into a drawing to win the free iPad. One lucky winner will win the iPad. <laughs> Plus an invite for you and three of your friends to come and sit in on a live show. Because it's a well-known fact. You haven't heard of the Sports Jock Show until you've seen it live. We'll announce the winner March 4th. So log on, sign up for the Sports Jock Wake Up Call, download the app, and win an iPad. Go to thesportsjock.com and click on Remind Me. Good luck from the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy. And now, back to the sports jock, Wayne Gandy. From the bottom of my lungs, the be blow is fitting this game. Coming up on you from the top, the ATL Eons ain't changed. Cooler than most players claim to be it. Get it from the A-Town C, the home of the Bay Cat Bow. Coming to road in other city streets, enough of the morality. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. You know, I can let that outcast just ride, but I, I got to... I no, gotta step in right now. Welcome back to the Sports Shock Show. I'm the Sports Shock Man Candy, sitting here with my co-host, the tall lady and the funny man himself, Big Kenny. No, I'm talking about co um, Just really, real quick, uh, for all of you, we we were not taking death lightly. 
Um, Big Kenny not. is we a professional. Not. He is a true professional comedian. And Don't try this at home. Do not try that at home. <laughs> Or <laughs> around anyone that's <laughs> yeah. missing limbs either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a licensed professional. Uh, I, I've been trained uh, in, in how to dissolve these situations. But that was funny. It, it was. It I'm really good, was. I mean, I don't mean to laugh. You know, I'm supposed to be stoic over here, but mm. that was funny. Uh, makes but, you wonder. It makes I you want wonder. the rights to that story you just told there. We were talking about the NBA All-Star Weekend in the first hour, and we finally got our NBA – historian, professional, uh, anything NBA this guy knows. I hope he liked his theme music right there since he got on us about it earlier yeah. in the year. Mr. Sekou Smith is on the line, NBA TV, NBA.com. Sekou, are you there, sir? I'm, I'm here, Wayne. What's up? And I appreciate the theme music. <laughs> 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 I appreciate you calling in so early. I know you just got back from Houston. Yeah, man. I was on Soul Plane 2013. <laughs> Soul Plane? <laughs> yeah. no, hey, I, I don't mind it, though. It's, it's nice having an all-black plane, you know. Wow. I mean, even the, even the flight attendants was. You know, I was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> Ain't nobody really tripping about leaving on time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> get you know. Get there. Oh, man, Mad Dog 2020 all up and down the aisle. <laughs> do the announcements uh, like this. Look here, folk. This is what we going to do. <laughs> yeah, I think I heard him say, I think I heard the captain say shout it four times. <laughs> well, say, no, it's all good. Uh, you was down in Houston in the action, first and foremost, uh, put to bed this Michael Jordan, LeBron, K Kobe story. Put that to bed for us. Give us your your take on this whole thing. Well, I, listen. I, I think if you watch the entire clip of what Jordan was saying to uh, to Michael, it's going to be on NBA TV tonight. Folks need to tune in. He was asking him, "Who would you take?" And Jordan's answer was more nuanced than, you know, Kobe got the ring, LeBron got one, so I take Kobe. Before that, he said, hey, LeBron is the most dominant player in the game right now. You know, but from a historical perspective, he's looking at the sum of your accomplishments. And Kobe's right now do, you know, outshine LeBron in terms of the number of rings he won. Um, that's not to say LeBron won't win more, you know, after 17, 18, or 20 years, or however many he plays, you know, so... That's a question that needs to be answered again, you know, at the end of LeBron's career. But, you know, Mike is Mike is a is a ring based, you know, guy. He's he's a guy who chased championships and won six, could have won more probably had he not gone and played baseball. So he's judging guys based on that standard. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. The NBA seems to be marketing their All Star Weekend. We we discussed earlier. Uh, Big Kenny called it a spectacle. I called it a hip hop convention. Uh, <laughs> whoever knew that David Stern was so hip? Well, I mean, if, if all he has to do is look at, it, at his lease, you know. Yeah. And the only people that like skinny jeans and tattoos more than NBA players are rock stars, you know. <laughs> so it, that, that crowd is, is there, man. And when you walk around Houston, and you see the fan base that, that shows up for All-Star Weekend this year and will show up in New Orleans next year. It is a hip-hop-based crowd. That, that's not to say it's not a good family environment. You know, like, you take your kids, you know, and, and you go, and if you really love basketball, you go and enjoy it no matter what your musical taste might be. But the hip-hop crowd, the, that part of the entertainment industry has embraced NBA. The NBA players have embraced them. And it would be foolish of David Stern or anybody at the NBA to look the other way at that. I, I always scratch my head when the NFL shows up and has the who and all these people performing. It's like, man, nobody in your league is, is riding around with the who in their iPod. You know, think about how to stay contemporary and how to stay current. And the NBA does a fantastic job of that. Well, speaking of kids, if you could do me a favor, uh, next time you see uh, Swiss Beats and Alicia, Alicia Keys, could you tell – them to stop bringing their kid around like it's an accessory. Uh, no. It's not a gold chain. Uh, he doesn't have to be everywhere. And Swiss, isn't that like your ninth kid or something? Like, where are the rest of the kids? Should you have them at least standing in the back of the picture? 
Yeah. Like, like, too, but like that, backup dancers. Yeah, or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me and Christina, I didn't understand. I, I was looking at Twitter during the, you know, during the performance, and she was getting savaged by people. Uh, you know, in the arena, whatever was going on with the sound on people's TV sets wasn't as bad in the arena. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't notice that her performance was as off as it was. But man, I saw some vicious stuff. You know, on Twitter about Alicia Keys. Not. Twitter has turned into, uh, you know, a venue for haters to come out and force yes. and say whatever they want to say. And it, it's, you know, it's hard to stomach sometimes, man, because <clears throat> I love me some Alicia Keys. I don't care what y'all say. I, uh, I can't have Beyonce. I'll take Alicia. You know, I'll keep it moving. You can't say her name if your wife might be listening. <laughs> keep her name out. Keep her name out. But uh, real quickly, another big thing that happened for the NBA. Serena Williams, Serena Williams, Serena Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Another big thing in the NBA, uh, they basically kicked Billy Hunter out. Billy Hunter is the was the head of the union. Uh, could you tell us exactly, was it nepotism or was it something else that really got him fired? I think it was a combination of things. It was the nepotism, you know, and the fact that he, you know, he had one of them Don King Ponzi schemes working with. You know, he's got his whole family making money off the, the players. And the players can't go back and look and see what services were rendered, you know, for all these millions of dollars that have been shelled out. So I I think it took them a while to get to this point to where they decided, you know, enough was enough of this. But it was certainly on the minds of a lot of guys. Even back, you know, dating back to the lockout, there were people concerned about it and wondering what the heck was going on. You know what I mean? Right. It's just too much, too much had transpired with, under Billy Hunter's, you know, tenure for the players to stand for any more of it. And I, I don't think the story's done. There's going to be some litigation potentially involved, you know, with with his attorneys and, and the new attorneys that the players will have um, working on it. And uh, we hadn't heard the last of Billy Hunter's son. Maybe he can go hang out with uh, Jesse Jackson Jr. <laughs> uh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I but, heard he had front row seats there. The <laughs> he might have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and a booth. And, <laughs> and well, the trade deadline is coming is uh, this week, uh, February 21st. Uh, tell us who's going where or everybody staying pat. I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, that's the great thing. All-Star Weekend shows up, and you think this is kind of the, the, you know, the highlight of this of this stretch before you get to the playoffs. But really Thursday, you know, the 3, the 3 p.m. deadline, for you know, is, is really where the rubber hits the road. We're going to find out if Josh Smith stays in Atlanta. Um, you're going to find out if Dwight stays in L.A. Do the Celtics bust up their team? Do the Clippers get something they might need to help them chase the championship? You know, a lot of things can transpire between now and then. None of it is concrete. You know, it's, it's all fluid until that deadline. And that's that's one of the things about the deadline that, that works in the favor of a lot of these teams is, you don't have any pressure to get anything done until, you know, Thursday morning. Um, so you can spend every waking moment, you know, between now and then exploring the possibilities and trying to find the best deal, you know, you can for your team. But I don't expect to see big names moving around. I think we probably will see some, some deals, but, you know, maybe not with the kind of marquee names and, and superstar players you'd expect. Would you, in your opinion, uh, what is the most likely person to move? Well, you know, two weeks ago I told you it was Josh Smith. Now I'm not so sure. You know, I don't know that the Hawks are going to move him um, and do anything with him now. You know, Toronto's been trying to move Andrea Bargnani, a former number one pick. Um, you know, seven-footer with great shot, but a guy who doesn't play in the in the post and doesn't rebound, block shots, and do anything else you'd expect from, you know, a traditional seven-footer. So he's a guy that's, that certainly could be on the move this week. Um, and there's going to be somebody else that, that we weren't expecting. You know, that, that's always the way it works is that these deals you hear about, you rumored, they don't necessarily come to fruition, but there's somebody who has no idea he's getting ready to get traded, and his team is working the phones right now to get him moved. <laughs> All right, that, real quickly, as I was watching the weekend, um, just very interested because, you know, the fashion was uh, really loud and in your face uh, with what some of the people had from the players to the people in the crowd to even some of the commentators. Uh, is there any background story to why Russell Westbrook dresses the way he does? Is there anything he's ever said? No, I mean, he's, uh, like I said, uh, if you look at, I, I'm too old, obviously, Wayne, to know, you know, what's up. I got a 14-year-old son, and he would never dress the way I dress, and, and vice versa. So, But he thinks Russell Westbrook's clothes look, 
look perfectly normal. So <laughs> that ought to explain to some people. You know, these are young guys. They're in their right. tw- early 20s. Fashion to them and what looks good to them is totally different than what it looks like to a guy, you know, in his late 30s, early 40s. Right. Well, Craig, oh, Craig oh, Sager, on, Craig Sager must get it. I'm, I'm saying yeah, there's, you, there's a difference between Sager, yeah. be, being able to see and blind. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> well, Sager, I got no. I'm not. I'm not taking. I'm not taking any shots of Sager. Yet. I'm gonna make him come on and defend his outfit. Cause I'm telling you, that, that jacket he had on last night was blinding. Wow. <laughs> Well, Sekou, we appreciate you for calling in and helping us with the NBA report. Uh, can't wait to see who gets moved by this Thursday. Um, before you go home, make sure you drop those clothes off at the cleaners now. <laughs> don't wanna... Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I, I don't I'm to take uh, – he, he did take burn them all at the hotel in Houston. I just don't want that <laughs> lipstick. I don't want that lipstick and that weed smoke to be Ooh. in it. So get them clean. <laughs> Sekou yeah. Smith, NBA.com. And all of that NBA was TV. from the plane. You know? wow. Thank you, Sekou. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after this for more of the Sports Talk Show. The White House. I thought you said that this job was for me and you. I ain't know that being clamped more of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. Sassy! Sassy! This week's episode, Rattlesnake at the Pond. Oh, Johnny, skipping rocks at the pond sure is fun. Hey, look, a moving stick. That ain't a stick. That's a rattlesnake. Sassy, we're in danger. Good idea, Sassy. Go get Mr. Gunderson. You will in a second, but first you'd like to tell us something we may not know about animal shelters in the United States? It's getting close, Sassy! (coughs) Approximately 8 million pets enter shelters each year? (coughs) The majority of which are in shelters because of owner-related issues that the animals have no control over? Sassy the rattlesnake! Save us, Sassy! (coughs) What, Sassy? You wish you were videotaping this? Sassy! Sassy is brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Remember, adopt! And now, back to the Sports John of Wayne Gandy. It's the Ten Crack Commandments. You're listening to the Sports Jack Show with Wayne Gandy. Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock Wayne Gandy. Big Kenny, my mic is still messed up. I, uh, I mean, we've been on this show for an hour and a half. These people still will not fix this mic. They th- I'm going to stay on them the whole show <laughs> until my mic sounds right. Ain't that how they say my mic? What, what's that my old? My mic sounds sound nice. Nice. Ain't that what they say? Uh, I, now, Sports Jack, I'm a, you know, you and I are pretty much of the same idea and similar individuals, but I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one. It is not your mic that is messed up. What is it? It is your production team <laughs> that is messed up. Your microphone, a oh. high quality, state of the art electronic. Oh, uh, okay, that's mechanism, the problem, sir. Yes, they they are the best that money right. possibly. I'm blaming can buy. the mic, but the you mic is fine. the mic, but it's it's like it's like blaming the plays, but this dude keep fumbling the ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not the coach's fault all the time. That's just that's just what I'm saying. So should I give them the number to fax me a, a resume? Uh, hey man, if if they run into Pigeons. you somewhere. Just, <laughs> <laughs> if they just run into us on the street, uh, holler uh, at us. Facebook friend us, and, and you can qualify for a chance to be a producer on this but show. We're going to talk about uh, OJ <laughs> and his Super Bowl party OJ in Simpson. a minute. We're going to yes. talk about yes. that yes. in a minute. So you sit back. But before we talk about that, uh, a politician in New York is really pushing to ban peewee football throughout the whole state. Uh, he has made it his mission. He wants to protect the children, uh, the Bronx Assemblyman Michael Benanit, uh, Benandito. I think that's how, you know, we, we get things wrong on the Sports Jock Show. But so that's don't. Right. don't <laughs> from don't, the production crew? Yeah, from everybody. We, <laughs> don't send them uh, out. But he, 
he says that he would like to get it down to prohibit children younger than 11 from playing organized tackle football. Hmm. In a state like New York, you know, who's, you know, their pro teams are legendary <laughs> uh, with the Giants and the Jets. Uh, Football-wise, as far as the collegiate and high school level, they're not yeah. like the Floridas right, and, right. The, and the southern states, the, the Californias, places where football through and through. But but they do have it, respectable teams you know. from the state of New York, Syracuse, Rutgers. Yes, that's uh, what I'm saying. Say, but yeah, it's not they're, like they're a very, full no, state no, 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 diehard. No, no. Right, no. right. Not, you know, everybody <laughs> doesn't have a, the symbol tattooed to their <laughs> to their children. You know? Right. They're, you know, they're more of a basketball or yeah. a state when you think yes. about right New York. Uh, do you think? You know, I, I can contest. I can attest to. I didn't play football until I was 13, uh, which was the eighth grade. And with that, I was still able to get to college, get to the pros. I have thought that when I go watch Little League games, not so much the tackling, I just don't see the people coaching. Like, it, they just yes. are out there worrying about winning. Yes. I would like to just see them coach. Because sometimes a lot of the injuries I've always said in any sport is – when you can start doing things more technical and not always trying yes. to do things physical. So, Big Kenny, tall lady, do, can you see this passing? And would you say 11 is that good age maybe, uh, you know, for 12 and up, maybe to have Little League, but under 11, 11 and under, maybe cutting it out? I see that it's a good um, way, place to start. It really is. Uh, on the – Younger level, having three sons that have played uh, on that level, I don't see the the, pro, the point when you don't have coaches. Uh, you have two kids who've been taught to run the ball mm-hmm. and, and a couple kids that, that may block, but some of the other positions, these kids are standing there or just running. They don't know what they're doing. Um, you haven't trained them to do a lot of stuff, so teams that have been taught become killers in a sense. They, they do put it down on, on little kids who don't have a clue as to what they're out there doing. So right. it can be very dangerous to kids who are clueless about what they should be doing on the field. So I think it, it, if you're not going to teach them, uh, you probably shouldn't have them out there. Big Kenny? Uh, Sports Jack, I think it would be better if they would do what you were talking about earlier instead of mandating the age that the children can play. Because I think by 11, a lot of the children who, unlike yourself, you started playing at 13, you say? 13. Uh, most kids by 13 aren't freakishly large like you were at 13. <laughs> so even if even if you were just even if you just got out there and stood around, you would have started. You know what I mean? Because you you were an offensive line by yourself at by the time. Nose uh, tackle. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, my okay, first well, position. Okay. So again, you were a whole D line by yourself <laughs> at 13. The rest the rest of the team was going block Gandhi. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. Uh, for the rest of them, they develop a lot of those skills. The mm. formidable skill development years are between maybe 8 and 13, but uh, maybe they should mandate the skill set of the coaches. Right. Uh, if, if, yes. if, you don't, if you're not a legitimate coach, maybe some of these uh, position coaches from colleges and high schools could be the ones that coach these little league teams instead of just putting uh, out uh, Joe, the dude from the bread truck, mm-hmm. and, and letting him coach the kids. Because uh, I think that's taking away an opportunity for children who really want to play to play at that age. Yeah, I, I think they can keep it around. I think that if I, I can see taking the tackling out, I, I don't know how they could manage it, but uh, maybe teaching them the skills of catching the ball, almost like running. Like I have my, my football camp is coming up in April uh, in, in Haines City, Florida. Shameless plug. Where you just, <laughs> hey, it's free for kids. It's been going on for 15 years. So, uh, and, 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 and I'll be doing a comedy hey, class at the, no, I'm just kidding. And we have, and, <laughs> And credit to the Wayne Gandy football camp. We put the Pouncey brothers in the lead. Now, oh. Ahmad, we, we, we've had. Hey, About that life. Yeah, Thank Ahmad you, Black. We, we, we put some people in the lead around here. About know, that NFL. I know uh, an eight-year-old need a spot at that camp. <laughs> no, since you're getting on me. We'll be back more of the Sports Jock Show right after this. <laughs> Go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. The Sports Jock Show is giving you a chance to win and win big. We're giving away an Apple iPad. Plus an invite for you and three of your friends to come down to the studio and enjoy a live show. And all you've got to do is wake up with a Sports Jock. Good morning. 
It's Monday. We have a great show for you today. Visit thesportsjock.com and click on the Remind Me app. Each Monday, the Sports Jock will call you to remind you to listen to the show. Every time you pick up the phone, your number is entered into a drawing to win the free iPad. One lucky winner will win the iPad, plus an invite for you and three of your friends to come and sit in on a live show. Because it's a well-known fact. You haven't heard the Sports Jock show until you see it live. We'll announce the winner March 4th. So log on, sign up with the Sports Jock wake-up call, download the app, and win an iPad. Go to thesportsjock.com and click on Remind Me. Good luck from the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy. And now, back to the Sports Jock with Wayne Gandy. Oh. I've been trying to do it right I've been living a lonely life I've been sleeping here instead I've been sleeping in my bed Sleeping in my bed So show me Welcome back to the Sports Chuck Show I'm the Sports Chuck Wayne Canty For you people that are anticipating the Super Bowl for next year, as most of you may know or may not know, the Super Bowl next year will be in New York. Yes, I did say <laughs> New York. Concrete me, jungle sure where I, streets are made Super Bowl, of. New York, February. Let's add all this together. What's going to happen in New York in February of 2014. Armageddon snowstorm 2014. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the first time the Super Bowl has ever been held in a cold, open-air stadium. They have had a couple of Super Bowls, as you may know, recently in Detroit and Indianapolis. But those places were indoors. They are trying a new trick. Now, uh, I'm not really understanding NFL. I don't get this. I know you love the city of New York, and you dream about selling this to people. But the last time I checked, Big Kenny and Tall Lady, Super Bowls come on at about mm, 6.35-ish p.m. New York. February the 2nd at 635 Outdoors. Armageddon Snowstorm 2014. <laughs> Something tells me it might be just a little brisk uh, uh, sitting in that stadium. And we have seen it really snowing in New York right now. It was, it's been snowing there for about a month. The It's a reason why all these years. Is this is Super Bowl 48. Uh, that will be taking place next year. The NFL, knowing this, which this is, this is, didn't this come up in the meeting? They're planning maybe to put the Super Bowl on Saturday so they can move it to Sunday based on the weather. So it's, it's kind of tentative they're, they're proposing. What, what, like Saturday it's going to be 30 below, but Sunday it's going to be 34 below. So uh, we, we want that four-degree increase. Mm. Uh, Will there uh, be skinny snowsuits? <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, the ones I feel most sorry for are the fans, number one, because they have to sit there and watch in the cold. And then, two, the halftime performers. Like, can you imagine Beyonce or Destiny Child in those little skimpy outfits they had at this Super Bowl right. dancing in an open-air stadium? I don't think you would be ready for this j- 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 jelly. I don't think right. I mean, it, I mean, it's freezing cold in New York freezing at that time. Who, and who, who okays this? Who signs that's, off on it? That's what like, I'm saying. I don't the know. one dude in the meeting going, excuse me, uh, excuse me. The North uh, what, about, what about how cold it's going to be everybody just ignoring him hey be quiet be quiet who could we get for halftime but it's going to be 32 below zero want to switch it to saturday and everybody's like yeah sounds good but Bet you we can keep those rappers out yeah <laughs> <laughs> what, what is what is what? i don't know that's what i'm saying I, I i can't imagine why they i know they've been trying to move it up north for a while because the super bowl like any big event like this brings money to the city 
Uh, but there's a reason why most of the Super Bowls have occurred in the state of California, Arizona, New Orleans, the state of Florida, because the weather, it lets people come. It lets people feel like the travel as far as the flights will be on time and all that stuff because that really people have to go back to work. They get out in the cities and spend money. They can get out in the city and spend money and feel free and and seem like they're on a vacation. You invite me to a snowstorm. The weather there is tricky. I know New York is capable of handling weather in any kind of way, Uh, but. It doesn't sound like but, an but inviting. New York, but New York weather has even crippled the city of New York. Anytime mm, right. it snows so much that a city like New York can't dig itself out immediately, then Mother right. Nature is clearly in charge. And couldn't you just see, remember when the Super Bowl was in Dallas and they thought they were going to have to postpone or cancel because they had some sort of freakish snowstorm that left a lot of ice everywhere. And that's a place where it usually doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But you're going to a place where it's probable. It's probably going to be snowing really, really hard at that time. And then you have to also factor in the fact that what if a warm weather team make make it there against a cold weather team? You do have a decisive advantage, it, trust yes. me. Oh, yeah. If you got the Patriots playing uh, Miami, playing San Fran, playing any warm weather team or a team that's used to being in a dome. I, I was gonna say, going to say, if they play in the Colts, yeah, the that's Falcons, what I'm saying. Anybody that's used to be in the dome, right. now that team really gets a leg up in this Super Bowl because of the weather. And, and trust me, it, it's different catching a hard ball, a, a cold ball. All that matters, throwing the ball, the lights, the glare, playing. If it snows, team, that's why they call it home field advantage because some teams get that weather to get you in. You want, if you're a Pittsburgh Stiller, you want to play some team, San Diego, yeah. in January. You want to get them there, it's snowing, because you're over there more worried about it being cold than holding on to the ball Um so why this, don't this be very interesting? Why don't they play the Pro Bowl in New York? Nobody wants to go to that game. <laughs> <laughs> why don't they just play that one there? Because I mean, that would bring it closer to home, and we because would have to the work. NFL executives use the Pro Bowl as a vacation. Right. Hmm. They don't make enough money to and just go. That's oh, what they do. A free for. vacation. Well, a free Nothing, vacation. Oh, right. Yes, Nothing's understand. better than free. Yeah, free yes. seven days in Hawaii right. is different than yes. spending my money for a seven day right. trip to Hawaii and getting back to the credit card bill. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's why they always have the Pro Bowl somewhere warm. Um, but this should be a very interesting concept outdoor Super Bowl. And uh, speaking of Super Bowl, I'm going to wait so you can chime in. I know you want to chime in on this. O.J. Simpson yes. had the Super Bowl party party in, mm-hmm. his, in his sale. Uh, O.J. Simpson. Yes. O.J. Simpson, the, the Hall of, of Fame. Uh, yeah. or, or, or how you say it? Orenthal. Orenthal. Orenthal James Simpson. James yes. Simpson. The Blade Runner. Yes. yes. The, the, <laughs> the original. The, the original Blade the Runner. The airport yeah. runner. Yeah. 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 I wonder, wonder if he can run through an airport with his blade. I wonder. Mm. I wonder. You know, TSA be looking for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more of the Sports Talk Show right after this. And if you're on Skype, you can now video call us or voice call us into the show. Just go to sportsjock.com. More of the Sports Talk Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Busy, busy me. So, anyway... Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. My friends keep commenting on my comment. Oh, there's another one. So many comments on my comment. Oh, I can't wait to watch TV tonight. Playoffs! Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Wait, wait. Mom, what? What? Hold What'd on. you say? Wait a second, huh? What? This weekend, unplug. Take your family to the forest. There's nothing in the world like experiencing nature firsthand. Trees, paths, bluebirds, streams. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Hey, Dad. How do you throw a curveball? 
How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They what just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. And now, back to the sports jock, Wayne Gandy. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock Wayne Gandy. We were talking about the Super Bowl 48 being held in New York next year. Order your mink now. <laughs> Uh, this past Super Bowl, Super Bowl 47, which happened two weeks ago, Baltimore Ravens winning Super Bowl 47 in New Orleans, um, was watched by many people. As most of you know, the Super Bowl is the most watched sporting event, if not the most watched event in the world when it happens. Uh, it was... It's so big that you can even watch it in jail. Uh, hmm. O.J. Simpson. The. The O.J. Simpson. Simpson yeah. uh, serving actually 30 years in prison for kidnapping and armed robbery out in Nevada, uh, which I think that is a disservice there. Uh, I don't think you can get 30 years for. It's actually 33 years. Oh, oh excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, when you when you serve in time, you got to be yeah. specific. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> Ain't no rounding down. 33 in, in the, years. In, yeah. um, the New York Post is saying that OJ held a Super Bowl party in his cell. Yeah. Mm. Um, OJ has a couple nickels, and obviously at this correctional center, which uh, the sports jock is being educated now, uh, you can buy your TV at the inmate store. Right, right. Put in your cell. And uh, he's at the he's at the Love Lock correctional. The love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if anything name. makes you anxious about going to a prison, uh, it's a prison having the name Love, love Lock. lock. Uh, and I'm imagining that if OJ is in jail and OJ's having a Super Bowl party, um, I don't want to be in solitary confinement that day. I want to be out and about. Uh, I'm quite sure it was a great turnout. I, I can just mm -hmm. see OJ in there and that, that, that cell. What is the cell? Six by eight? Uh, how big some, is it? Something uh, like it's that? It's an 80 square foot shell. Okay, I can just see. How many people you think we can get in there? Mm. Uh, Standing not, room not, only? Not sitting uh, in you, each other Usually around. in prison, the key <laughs> is to keep people out, out. of your cell. <laughs> 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 you don't need a, you don't want a group of people <laughs> gathered around in the cell in, in, in prison. Uh, uh, the fact that he's inviting people over. Yeah. You know, <laughs> mm. let, let's have some punch. Let's have uh, some chips and watch the game. Really, OJ? Uh, I mean, so maybe. I'm quite I, mean, sure I guess the rec room was good enough for you it was a great well you probably had a 36 inch the rec room probably got a 24 inch i, I don't know how they're how, what size TV. it's an 80 square foot sale a 32 <laughs> inch would take up the entire sale he's got no room for a sale mate now uh, if he gets a 32 inch tv but they mm. say uh, at least a dozen people did show up um to the sale watch the game uh, my first question to you two is what was the menu hmm well if he wasn't on the menu, uh, <laughs> uh, you know what's know. on the menu: prison commissary food, ramen noodles, honey buns, uh, hot cocoa. Bro, I'm OJ. I got hold on, hold on, hold on. hot cocoa. Hot, hot cocoa. cocoa. <laughs> I mean, it's cold in jail, bro. Hey, you know hey, what I mean? You don't think they could have paid a guard like, like we see so often 
to to bring in a little something from his uh, lunch. He just so happened to have, you know, a 36 wing lunch with. <laughs> I, I don't with a know. Few I'm more concerned less. And, I'm, I'm less concerned with the menu than I am the guest list. I mean, who, <laughs> <laughs> who do you get to come to a prison Super uh, Bowl party? Cannibal uh, Lecter. Uh, yeah, I want, I want the I want the cannibal and the, and the, cereal, <laughs> and the cereal killer. You guys can't come. Uh, well, you guys get there first before all the snacks are gone. Right. We don't want you hungry. Well, they're reserved seating. Reserve. I'm just saying, is there reserve yeah. seating? You would, I think if you would the have triple, to. If the triple life murder guy, did he I get saw you. If, if, like, like I saw all you the other, in the sh- in all shower. the other sports dudes that have been arrested. Ray Carruth was there. Oh, uh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no. who, who else has been arrested? Hey, uh, it was the guys that looked at him funny at the shower. Right? That's who he invited. <laughs> Come Probably. on in. I'm go- I want to make friends. I think maybe this was an opportunity Once to make again, friends. Once again, this is prison. Making oh. friends from people you met in the shower is not <laughs> suggested. Okay. That is not. You don't want to do that. I don't know. Now, with this, I'm not about that life. <laughs> with this kind of coverage and this being reported, do you think, uh, because even online you see um, the question is, should O.J. Simpson be allowed to have a TV in his prison cell? Do you think this may stop something like that because people will look and think, oh, you're supposed to be suffering and mm-hmm. you're in there in a kind of way enjoying no, I think that's uh, a, a a basic uh, humanitarian perk to allow him to watch television. Uh, may do something for the morale of the people who are locked up with, you know, unsavory types. But um, that that's just a problem. I, I mean, before they start trying to regulate the TVs and sales, start trying to regulate the drugs and the murders in prison. If you're really going to focus on eliminating something, right. try eliminating the man rape. If you really want to help eliminate that and, and let them watch the game. And let them watch the game. Yeah. And probably maybe just let them watch the game as a Maybe as a something unit. as a unit. Yeah, because can you imagine the the resentment of the dudes that got left out of OJ's party? Right, right. Well, I, I'm figuring there was one guy that probably would never get invited, and that's Jerry Sandusky. <laughs> oh. I don't think he's going to get invited to any. He was the halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him being on anybody's prison guest Oh, list. he was the halftime show. He, <laughs> or, or he opened up for the halftime yeah. show. Oh, and he probably over there like, man, I got a 46-inch, man. Come on over to my cell. And there's like only one dude that got some real thoughts on his mind. I about to say 46 inches. That ain't what you want in prison either. You don't want to get that in prison either. We'll be back before the Sports Talk oh, show right after this. <laughs> More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. Hey, over here. What? Right here in the back. Where? Over by the fence. You? The bike? Yeah, the bike. Right in the grass where the kids left me a while ago. You know how lonely it is being left day after day, not being able to cruise the reservation? Pardon me? Remember when you got me for the kids? You told them, no, you kids go have fun, enjoy the outdoors, and be careful. Mm, Yeah? I really miss it, especially when they put that playing card in my spokes, and I made a really cool sound the faster we went. Um... Well, could you get my tires a little air, dust off my seat, and remind the kids how fun I still am? Okay. (coughs) Oh, you are dusty. Yeah, and I may need a couple of bolts tightened, too. Now let's go. As Native American parents and caregivers, our encouragement to healthy lifestyles for our kids is helping them get outside and play. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov slash Indian Country. Brought to you by USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Hey, Dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. And now, back to the sports John Wayne Gandy. Make them away down. 
downtown, walking fast, faces passing, I'm homebound. Welcome back to the Sports Talk Show. I'm the Sports Talk Wayne Gandy. Another story in the Terrell Owens saga. The ex-NFL player, future Hall of Famer, was confronted by the LAPD this past Friday after the cops got a call that he had been banging on a woman's door. <laughs> For roughly three hours hmm. and refused to leave. Uh, TMZ had reported this story. I did a little background on the story. Three hours is a long time to be banging anywhere. Yes. Three hours uh, <laughs> to be banging anything <laughs> anywhere. Yes, yes. <laughs> to be banging on a woman's anything. That is a long time. Three, Three hours, hours. Yes. is a long time to be doing anything. Uh, when the police came, uh, the lady said she did not want to press charges. She did not feel s- scared that he was going to hurt her. Mm-hmm. Uh, really? Um, <laughs> uh, the police officers let him know that she did not want to see him, and he did leave. Um, after the first hour of banging on the door, what are you thinking? Listen. Listen. <laughs> After the sixth knock <laughs> on my door and I'm not answering it, you are concerning me. I'm worried. Okay. Like if you knock and, uh, and I don't say anything and then you knock again uh-huh. and I don't say anything and you knock again, I'm calling the police because <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're unstable individual. The, 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 universal, uh, the, the universal custom is that someone knocks. They answer. If they don't answer, you go away. Mm-hmm. So to bang on the door for three hours, this dude needs some sort of. I mean, don't don't end up being a Shamiqua Holes Claw. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you're um, inside after the first hour, you're you're kind of afraid. I mean, after the first hour? 15, 15 seconds, that's what I'm saying. Okay. And when this dude goes, I know you in there. I know you in there. That's when you get concerned. I mean, because the 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 understanding is if even if i am home and i'm not coming to the door i don't want to talk to you right. is is the point so for you to force me somehow to the door is scary so it doesn't take minutes hours to realize that something is wrong within the first few seconds of this going down yeah this dude needs to have the police show up tall lady after the second hour of knocking on the door what are you thinking um Probably trying to figure out what other points of entry could this food come into my residence. What? <laughs> trying so to you, out. So are you moving about or are you still, uh, you know, because a lot of times uh, when, people come, when people come and you don't want them, you kind of sit still. Your first thing is, okay, I ain't going to let them even see me being here. Obviously, he must have known she was there. Uh, from the female perspective of a person who's had a volatile situation a time or two, uh, I would think that that she probably is in there saying, "I don't want to talk to you." Okay, so you, you know, thinking, she's probably she's okay. probably in there. There's probably some dialogue going on. I I don't believe that he stood there with nothing happening in that in that place. Um, I think that he was sane enough to stay on the outside, but that that there had to be. I, my thinking is that there possibly had to be some dialogue back and forth during those three hours to keep him outside that door and thinking, baby, baby, please let me in. Okay. And she's probably in there saying, "You're not getting no more of this good stuff." I, I was about to say I couldn't feed a woman. I would not feed her ego that way. Okay. I could not feed a woman's ego that way. I mean, to, that's, that's she'd be in yes. there thinking, you know what? I really put it on you that you would stand outside my house pleading with me. Over three hours. So you see dialogue time. going back and forth I through had the door. To one, had to be. But now keep in mind, this is Terrell. He don't. He don't. He He's not, not that terrible. Of, he, he not much of a talker. <laughs> <laughs> he don't need a lot of dialogue to be stupid. So. So the the bigger question is: Is Terrell at the door, or is T O at the door? Because you know they two different people. I believe that Terrell was at the door because if T.O. was at the door, T.O. probably would have been up in there and that would have been another news story, a different type of news story. I I think that that Terrell was at the door and he was talking with this woman back and forth, back and forth. And I think after three hours, she's probably like, I'm tired. Look, I'm I'm tired. Now, now, is he paying the rent 
Big Kenny, do you think if if he's paying the rent, is that what really kept him there? Like, no, I, I mean, if I, I pay, pay if, I'm pay, if I'm paying the rent, I got a key. There's no <laughs> sense. There's no sense in me knocking on the door. Gosh. That's that's ridiculous. I mean, you know, let's not make him more of a fool than he seems to be already. <laughs> maybe she, maybe she changed and, the locks. Yeah, and so you get evicted. I'm saying right. we on a we on a day to day lease. If I'm paying the rent, <laughs> you act up and you got to go. But uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's amazing to me how someone who uh, seems to have as many resources and such a high profile as a Tara Lawrence would even be struggling with a chick. You know, I got right. 99 problems, but I mean, come on. It's his profile, chick ain't one. Yeah. Is his profile still high. Is that, is I mean, that a guy thing? It's, because it's, well, all, all I'm saying as much is as media once a Tara Lawrence, once a Tara Lawrence, always a Tara Lawrence. And it's subjective. Uh, a woman who's looking to somehow change her status would see a Terrell Owens who's probably above her status even at this stage of the game as a come up. Mm. And that's why she has him outside of her door talking to him through the door for three hours. Well, I'm saying a, a man that would allow himself to stand outside for three hours is playing himself. Right. Terrell was in charge of that. Yeah. You know, either let me in or I start filing papers to get you put out. <laughs> One of the two. Well, in another sad mm -hmm. note, before mm -hmm. we go on any for Lakers owner. Terrell should have got himself some blades. That's what he should have. Stop. Lakers, <laughs> Lakers <laughs> jumped up to the second floor. Lakers owner Jerry Buss, uh, the famed owner of the Lakers, has died, mm -hmm. passed away what? at the age of 79. Uh, he's owned the Lakers for as far as I can remember, uh, at least from the days of magic, so at least the last 30 35 years, he's owned the Lakers. Uh, he has passed away. I'm quite sure this has been contributed to the product that the Lakers put on the court. Uh, but no, no, no. He died. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> they killed him! <laughs> well, remember the Kansas City fans? Yes, I, I thought about that the one, Kansas too. City fans said Blamed he, he square on the team. The team. Yeah, so, yeah, the Lakers probably uh, did it. Jerry, in his time as the owner, 10 titles. Remember, five with Magic and five with Kobe and Kareem, and along with uh, the Celtics, uh, you know, the Lakers and the Celtics, the most yeah. the two most storied franchises in the NBA. Sad for the Lakers. The 80 years, though, Jerry, for how you got it in, uh, I'm quite sure, hey, we applaud you. Give, give Jerry a round of applause. Uh, he can ride off into the sunset. He can sunshine. ride off into the set. But he, he made a mark. And um, I'm quite sure we'll hear more about this as the week go on. We'll be back with more of the Sports Jock Show after this. Don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandhi is coming up next. Hello, and welcome to today's lottery drawing. Good luck. And here's today's winning numbers. First one up, it's not yours. Second one not yours and another number that's not yours 